Hello guys, welcome back to our channel Gairi and Sulkai. Today we shall be discussing about a clinically relevant topic of diabetic ketoacidosis and hyperglycemic hyperosmolar state denoted here as HHS. Both diabetic ketoacidosis and HHS must be considered as a case of medical emergency. They are acute and life-threatening complication of diabetes. They occur due to critically low levels of insulin in the body. Diabetic ketoacidosis is more common in type 1 diabetes whereas HHS is more common in type 2 diabetes. Both these conditions can be caused due to six eyes. The first eye is the eye of infection which can be of pneumonia, urinary tract infection or cellulitis. It can also be caused due to inflammatory disease such as pancreatitis. Intoxication such as alcohol intoxication or cocaine intoxication could also cause this. Low insulin levels in normal person or inappropriate withdrawal of insulin in diabetic patient could also precipitate it. Infarction in the vessels of heart as in the case of acute MI or in brain as in the case of stroke could also trigger it. It can also be triggered by iatrogenic substances such as corticosteroids. So due to any of these conditions, there is reduced synthesis of insulin from the beta cells of pancreas. So less glucose is present for consumption of cells. So the ATP production also decreases in the body. So now body resorts to secondary energy sources such as triglycerides. Triglycerides undergo lipolysis and this leads to increased production of free fatty acid in the blood. These free fatty acids undergo beta oxidation to produce ox acetyl-CoA. And this acetyl-CoA goes to the liver and undergoes the process of ketogenesis. This leads to formation of various ketone bodies such as acetoacetate and beta-hydroxybutyrate. And these ketone bodies enters the bloodstream and release various proton ions. Since there is excessive accumulation of proton ions in the blood, this situation is known as acidosis. And since it is caused by ketone body, it is known as ketoacidosis. Apart from this effect, any of those six eyes could cause to increase stress within the body. This stimulates the sympathetic nervous system, which in response releases various hormones such as epinephrine or norepinephrine, which in turn stimulate the alpha cell of pancreas to secrete glucagon. And in combination, these three hormones promote the process of glycogenolysis by increasing the breakdown of glycogen into glucose and the process of gluconeogenesis by causing a breakdown of glycerol and amino acids into glucose. So therefore, the glucose in the body increases. This causes hyperglycemia. And when this blood reaches kidney for filtration, the extra glucose present in the blood exceeds the reabsorption capacities of the kidney. Therefore, there is decreased reabsorption of glucose, other ions such as sodium, chloride, and potassium along with other ions and this causes the drawing of excess water from the kidneys and this leads to excessive excretion of sodium glucose and water along with other ions and the process here is known as osmotic diuresis which leads to dehydration and this causes a reduction in blood volume which manifests as hypotension as this reduces the total water from the body and there is excessive glucose present in the blood. This causes the manifestation of hyperosmolarity, which is more commonly seen in hyperglycemic hyperosmotic state. So the major phenomenon that cause the clinical presentation in the case of diabetic ketoacidosis are ketoacidosis and dehydration. So the phenomenon of dehydration and hyperosmolarity cause the clinical manifestations of hyperglycemic hyperosmolar state. The DKA that is diabetic ketoacidosis is acute in onset and is more common in type 1 diabetes whereas HHS is not acute in onset and is more common in type 2 diabetes. In the case of DKA, hyperosmolarity is variable whereas in the case of HHS, hyperosmolarity is present in excess of 320 osmoles per liter. Now let us see how these excessive ketone bodies cause other manifestations of diabetic ketoacidosis. These excessive ketone bodies trigger the chemotrigger zone present in the brain and cause the manifestations of nausea and vomiting. Since the ketone bodies are acidic in nature, they give away the free proton ions. These excessive proton ions stimulate the peripheral chemoreceptors present in the body such as aortic body and the carotid bodies. 
they send impulse to the CNS and increase the respiratory rate so that more of CO2 can be expired out of the body and acidity is taken down and this causes the major manifestations of DKA that is Kussmaul respiration and the characteristic feature of this Kussmaul respiration is deep and labored breathing. And this excessive respiratory rate also breeds out recitone which occur as a manifestation of sweet and fruity smell. And due to excess proton generation due to ketone bodies, there is increased concentration of H plus ions in the extracellular fluid. So more H plus ions are pumped into the cell by this pump and as a result K plus ions present in the intracellular fluid are driven out of the cell. Another pump present here, sodium potassium ATP pump. The working of this pump is dependent on insulin availability. Since there is less insulin present due to less insulin secretion, there is blocking of this sodium potassium pump. So more potassium remains in the extracellular fluid. This leads to reduction in total body potassium and there is an increase in serum potassium. This causes the manifestation of arrhythmia and it is presented by the patient as palpitation or chest pain. This also causes reduced intestinal palpitations or no palpitations in the intestine known as ileus which are presented by the patient as abdominal pain. Now as there is reduction in total body potassium along with other cations, there is a high anion gap present in the case of diabetic ketoacidosis and since there is increased proton production this causes acidosis and which combinedly known as the phenomenon of HAGMA that is high anion gap with metabolic acidosis. So that's all for the pathophysiology part of diabetic ketoacidosis. In the next video, we'll learn about the symptoms, clinical presentation and management of diabetic ketoacidosis. So that's all for today guys. Hit the like and subscribe button, post your queries in the comment section and stay tuned for the journey of advanced cognition.